the most broken champion nobody's abusing. Hello summoners and welcome back to another pro guides video. My name's Saskio and today we'll be talking about showing you how to play one of the best junglers that many players aren't utilizing. For jungle champions, jungling as a role requires champions with consistent damage, utility, and excellent clear speed to help you affect the map properly. Having these tools will allow you to make your own place and set your team up for success. Lilia is a champion that has flown off the radar for most of the player base. She was very unappreciated due to the hype that came from the Yone leaks and teasers that popped up after her release. Her popularity and pick rate were at rock bottom for a while due to those circumstances, until pro players picked her up. Since then, people started building up experiences on her and shown she's very strong, if not broken. Now why should you play Lilia? You should play Lilia because over the last week, she's been starting to gain traction in solo queue and professional play in almost every region. Lilia is a very strong champion, but she has a different playstyle in comparison to the other junglers. One thing she has in common with Graves in Italy, by the way the two most commonly picked junglers right now, is that she's a champion with excellent clear. Having an excellent clear speed as a jungler gives you the flexibility in your pathing. Similar to how Aesol has his system with the stars to do damage, Lilia has to play around her mobility and short cooldowns. She must use her ability to weave in and out to do maximum amounts of damage. She's not someone you can all in with unless you have the ultimate available. She's a very rage inducing champion to play against because she builds like a bruiser but is still able to output so much damage against squishies and especially against tanks. If you enjoy League because of finding enjoyment from tilting your enemies, Lilia is a great choice for you. In the LPL, JDG Kanabi picked her up on her debut week versus OMG into Trundle and Lee Sin and found great success with the pick. This is one of the first instances of people seeing Lilia in general and inspired other players to try her out because Kanabi is currently regarded as one of the best junglers in the world. Even in the NA LCS, FlyQuest started off their set against Cloud9 in the playoffs with an overwhelming win with Santorin's Lilia by abusing the potential of her level 1 strength. FlyQuest planned out strategic invades to stop C9 Blabber from playing the early game. This tilting game led to Cloud9 banning Lilia for the last 3 games of the set. Let's talk about tips on how to increase your success rate with Lilia. To be able to execute on Lilia, you will need to have an understanding of when to draft Lilia to fit your team comp. Doing so can enable you to do shocking things to your opponents. Lilia is very effective against melees and immobile melee characters, especially tanks. Tanks will not be able to do much to a Lilia. An example of a tank that struggles into Lilia is Volibear. Volibear is a very popular champion in this meta, but Volibear can never duel a Lilia one on one. Lilia will always kite Volibear while putting out a lot of damage, especially after she has Leandres. Volibear is just helpless unless his lanes are stronger and can follow up on his CC. With her Q's passive, Lilia can ramp up movement speed with ease, allowing her to go in and out of fights. Although she has her strengths against tankier immobile champions, she struggles when the enemy team has long range or point and click abilities to lock her down and poke her. Lilia is a low range champion. She only has a little bit of range with her swirl seed and her ultimate to set up engagements. Stacking her Q's passive is crucial in fights, and as a result of her low range, she won't be able to stack her movement speed passive effectively against ranged champions. She's susceptible to being kited, but if she plays around her Q passive, she'll be able to alleviate those weaknesses. At times, playing as Lilia will feel clunky only because she has her own ultimate to set up the W. It's a slow ability and hard to land without CC. It's like the third Q on Aatrox in terms of damage and speed. The ability is primarily used for clear, but if you're able to draft Lilia into a team comp with CC, examples being Galio, Ash, TF, Volibear, Nautilus, or basically any CC, you'll enable yourself to play more aggressively with your plays. You want to draft Lilia into tankier compositions with low range. Having an effective draft will already set you up for success. Now that we've ran through why and how to draft Lilia, let's optimize our runes and item builds by looking at the most popular builds. For Lilia's runes in the jungle, most players like to take Phase Rush and Dark Harvest. Phase Rush allows you to accomplish your goals of stacking your passive and chasing your targets with ease because it's really easy to activate for Lilia. It can also be used as a tool to disengage, re-engage, and just overall really annoying for people to deal with for an already mobile champion. Some players don't think Phase Rush is valuable to have on Lilia because she already has so much mobility in her kit. So Dark Harvest is the alternative keystone that people like on Lilia. Dark Harvest is really snowball-y rune, as you can proc it multiple times in a fight. It's a slow starting rune, but you can really be deadly if you pick up early kills. It can proc on Lilia's Swirl Seed, and even from Dream Dust, which can lead to some kills that you don't expect. For Lilia top players, Conquer and Arcane Comet fit her a lot more. Conquer helps in long trades, especially against melees, and it's very easy to stack as Lilia. Arcane Comet is good against ranged and helps your poke immensely. 
It will proc on your Dream Dust, and later in the game, it'll have a lower cooldown to proc multiple times in a fight. Lilia has a lot of flexibility in her item choices. For boots, we recommend Swifties, Sorks, Lucidity, Mercs, or Tab Eyes depending on the enemy team comp and what you're looking to build towards. For jungle, you'll have to buy Stalker's Blade, Runic Echoes. Skirmisher Saber is good in some situations when you need dueling power. After jungle item, you can transition into Leandres. For mid, you can buy GLP first or Rod of the Ages. For top, you can buy Rod of the Ages as well. For top, you can itemize into Roa or Leandres first. Leandres is a core item you must buy every game for her to be a strong champion. It synergizes and feels like it was made for her kit. When you buy Leandres, you'll appreciate the huge spike of damage. From there, you can transition into Rylai's if you want more CC and damage, or Deadman's Plates slash Zonia's if you're building against physical threat. Banshees or Abyssal Mask into teams with heavy magic. This is all preference. You can even opt into Death Cap if you really felt like bopping the enemies. Buying tank stats make you very slippery, as you're a tankier bruiser with a million movement speed to go around. For Lilia's jungle clears, she's not a champion that is meant to affect the map early. Her full clear is very quick, even without a leash. Look to full clear consistently. You can start from either side, blue to gromp to wolves to raptors to red to krugs, or red to krugs to raptors to wolves to blue then to gromp. Pro tip, Lilia is a champion that can start raptors without losing too much clear speed. When starting raptors, it will give your laners flexibility on what they want to do while hiding your pathing from the enemy team. A clear that's very good when you're looking to avoid contesting scuttles is to do Raptors, Red, Golems, Reset, and buy a Dark Seal or Machete. From there, you can go to Blue, Grom, Wolves, Raptors, then Golems. This will allow you to keep up and farm while not losing too much when you can't contest scuttle because your team drafted Cassin in mid or no priority. Just make sure you have a ward on Blue if you want to try this clear. Now that we've gone through her setups, let's get into her gameplay and show why she's the most dominant in a VOD review, Flyquest Santorin in the jungle role since it's the most commonly played role for Lilia. Santorin plans to start the enemy raptors. We talked about how easy it is for Lilia to start raptors, but this is a common pathing that is done by Kane players. They like to take the enemy raptors starting Q and soloing them, and then running over to smite red when the enemy is finishing the buff, as most players don't use smite for their first camp. With the help of bot lane, Santorin is able to pick up Blabber's raptors and red to start the game with an enormous lead. Santorin communicates to his mid laner to get priority so he can punish the flashless Blabber at the enemy blue. He knows that Blabber will be here due to the level 1 start and solo's ward. Due to this play, the game is heavily in favor of the Lilia pick due to the early game planning of FlyQuest. FlyQuest is able to contest due to their lead when normally it would be harder, and they pick up a free skirmish win. Look how annoying Lilia is for the enemy team to deal with. She's so slippery while doing consistent damage. Although he dies at the end of the play, it shows a lot of potential on what this champion can accomplish. Now let's reiterate how Santorin had success on Lilia. FlyQuest planned a level 1 due to the strength of Lilia's Raptor clear, and the strength of the bot lane matchup at level 1 as well. They punish C9 for not respecting their late invade. They then deny Blabber his blue buff because he blue flashed from the invade. Those two early plays looked small initially, but it has a lot of communication and careful planning. It shut down Blabber, not allowing him to hit the level 6 power spike in a timely manner on Nocturne. After those two plays, Santorin paths efficiently to farm the most amount of camps and secures many objectives to set up fly quests to scale with their composition to close out the game. Similar to the last game, Dirax's Piosic tried to do the Raptor start as well with Evelyn. He's able to secure the big Raptor away but doesn't clear the whole camp so he doesn't start the game level 2. Neither jungler develops a lead from this level 1. Let's see how T1 Cuz approaches the game from here. T1 Cuz does his Raptors for level 2 and immediately looks to invade. He knows that Evelyn used Smite level 1 and didn't hit level 2, so he'll take a bit longer because he won't have Smite to clear the blue buff. He steals the enemy Raptors and abuses the flashless Evelyn. Due to the level 1 and how he punished Evelyn, he's able to counter jungle Evelyn's camps, his own camps, and secure dragons. He has such an immense lead due to the early circumstances and how efficient his pathing was. T1 opts into a 4v5 fight against DRX, and the fight is played well with the Ash, Nautilus, and Lilia utility used to set up for the Akali to clean up the fight. Although they lose the fight, it's expected due to being behind in numbers. This is an example of one of the weaknesses of Lilia. Even with tenacity, she's so short ranged and is susceptible to being CC'd and instantly died in the fight before being able to use her ultimate. Here's a salty run back of the last fight at Dragon, but this time, Lilia is able to get a lot of damage in with her Swirl Seed and Blooming Blows. She's able to do so much consistent damage in this fight while disengaging and re-engaging. This is how you want to play Lilia. 
within lethal range. Throughout the game, something consistent Kuz does is shown in this fight as he uses Lilia's lilting lullaby as a pick tool to initiate fights with Swirl Seed. He does it in this fight as well, and doesn't greet for the carries with his ultimate. He understands his limits very well and puts himself in a situation to succeed. How did Kuz win this game as Lilia? He was able to abuse the scenarios from level 1, letting him get a free invade and counter jungling the Evelyn. He cleared consistently, secured objectives, and made picks with his lilting lullaby. Now those replays were from pro play, which is normally more reserved and passive in comparison to solo queue. Let's check out a solo queue VOD of JDG Kanabi's approach to Lilia. Kanabi stacks his Q passive on Crab, and is able to follow up his top laner's skirmish to save him. Even after the gank, he keeps his stack up on minions which allows him to style on the Karthus and avoid all his damage to eventually pick up 3 kills by surprise. This is without items, just wait until he spends his gold. Because of Nimbus Cloak and Flash interaction, Kanavi is able to keep his distance from the melee assassin that is Talon, and wait out his abilities and is able to chase him down with his phase rush. Just look at how fast his champion can move around the jungle. She can clear very quickly while being able to go to lanes to counter gank if it's needed. Look at how much damage Kanavi puts out here. This is just from his Leandres item spike. This shows the emphasis on why Leandres is a core item. He kills Karthus with Dream Dust and Leandres. Talon is not having a great time. Lilia is too tanky for him and does too much damage to him. Lilia is too mobile for him to run away once they engage in combat. Although this replay showcased primarily mechanics, it's a good indicator of the peak of the champion's potential and what experienced players can do with the champion. This champion is still relatively new and there's much more potential for Lilia players. That will conclude it for our Lilia rundown for today. Make sure to hit that like, comment, and subscribe button to help us out. Also, let us know if this video helped. Make sure to check out our new VOD review coaching system to help analyze what you're missing to take your gameplay to the next level. Lastly, make sure to check out ProGuys.com for more useful information. There, we have challenger level coaches who can help analyze your gameplay and reach your goals. There are also daily live classes from top two instructors like Zyrene, myself Saskio, Mike Young, and courses from your favorite players like Doublelift and Nightblue3. That's everything for now. Good luck in your next games and I'll see you on the Rift.